Hello friends, I am back with another Dreamlight Valley video. This one was highly requested after I posted the full tour of my valley. Today we are talking about what to do when you inevitably hit the item limit. While I was decorating, I figured out a couple of ways to kind of get around the item limit so that you can place more items. So I'm gonna share those with you today. A few things to note before we start, in case you haven't quite hit the item limit yet, the limit is 3000. This might sound like a lot, but not if you're trying to decorate the whole valley. <laughs> you tend to run out of space pretty quick and then the game will not let you place anything else or basically do anything. So here are some tricks you can use to help trick the item limit into letting you place more things. Tip number one, clean up any spawned items. Basically, any items that regularly spawn in your valley are gonna add to the item limit and take away from items you can use to decorate. This includes rocks, flowers, night thorns, and any dropped items that you've forgotten to pick up, like dream shards as well. So sometimes when you randomly hit the item limit, it's actually not because of items you've placed, but just because more stuff has spawned. So it's good to go around and check and make sure that's not the case before continuing with these tips. Tip number two, Holes count towards the item limit, unfortunately. This was one of the biggest lifesavers for me when I was decorating my entire valley. Although incredibly frustrating, this one probably has the biggest impact of all the tips I'm gonna share here today. If you've hit the item limit, you have to get rid of your pumpkin patch. I'm so sorry. But don't worry, I promise it's only temporary. <laughs> because every single individual hole counts towards the item limit, whether it has crops in it or not, one of the best ways to surpass the item limit is to collect all your crops and let the holes fill themselves in. The game will act as though you've picked up hundreds of items and you'll be able to do so many more builds. Once you've placed all the items you want to and done all the builds that you had planned, you can go ahead and replant your garden and continue getting that money from those pumpkins. Number three, Use bigger items wherever you're able to. Obviously, this isn't always the answer, depending on what kind of build you're doing, but wherever you can, try to use bigger trees and bigger rocks, especially whenever you're trying to take up more space without going over the item limit as much, as well as the rocks that already come with trees as part of them. So like the tropical greenery sets, all those big rocks with the log and the mushrooms are really cute for forest builds. And the best thing is that they only only count as one item each, meaning you can easily fill up gaps in your builds and make things look a lot fuller without sacrificing your item limit. Tip number four is a bit annoying, but it's helpful, I promise. Craft these flower rectangles wherever you want to drop flowers in the game to try and save on your item limit while still filling up the space with flowers. You have the rectangle or circle soil options in your crafting station, so you can make it work for almost any build. And if you can stick to only crafting a couple of different types of these flower beds, then you can easily remember which flowers you need to hoard, which will make collecting and crafting them way easier. Even though it's a bit annoying, you are gonna notice in the long run that this has helped save your item limit a lot. Tip number five, use more pards and fencing. Well, all the free items like trees and rocks and landscaping stuff, unfortunately do count towards the item limit, pards and fencing don't. The obvious downside, of course, is that you'll be doing a lot of crafting, but I guess the message here is that hard work does pay off. Honestly, a lot of people ask me how I managed to get so much pathing in my valley, and the truth is I just went around smashing rocks and collecting materials while I was on the spin bike. <laughs> takes the pain out of cardio, takes the pain out of crafting. It's a win-win, really. Although sometimes when I was feeling lazy, frankly, I just went around mashing buttons while I watched TV, so that works as well. Either way, pathing is a fantastic way to fill up your valley and make it look a little bit more completed, and it doesn't add to the item limit at all, which is amazing. And those are all the tips I have for you so far on how to work your way around the item limit. I will definitely keep you all updated if I discover any more sneaky little tricks like these, but I hope you all found these five tips really helpful let me know in the comments if you've hit the item limit in Dreamlight Valley yet and feel free to send me or tag me in any Dreamlight Valley builds you've done because I would love to see what you lovely creative people are up to. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!